Jakarta, our first destination and first contact with Indonesian culture. Jakarta is the capital city of Indonesia and also the biggest city in the country. With more than 10 million inhabitants, it is the 11th biggest city on the planet and is the economical, political and cultural center of the country. Jakarta is classed as a province instead of a city. It also holds the important status as capital of Indonesia. Instead of a mayor, Jakarta has a governor and the province is divided into several regions, each with their own administrations. The city is an architectural tango of modern skyscrapers and humble wooden huts, the streets alive with the hustle and bustle of locals. Regardless of the chaotic impression given by Jakarta, it is one of Indonesia's safest cities. Infrastructure development has not kept up with the increase in population, resulting in extensive traffic congestion, massive air pollution, and problems with waste collection. The transport system in the city is predominantly comprised of private minibuses and motorized rickshaw, which the locals call Baja. Despite attempts to modernize public transport, only 2% of the population use it regularly. Annually, Jakarta registers a 10% growth in the number of passenger cars. Jakarta is not pedestrian friendly. The payments are high and poorly maintained. Traffic is a challenge for anyone who tries to cross the roads here. The locals are well versed. We, however, are a little bit less so. But practice makes perfect. The first landmark we visit is the Monas National Museum, a tourist spot that you must not miss when you visit Jakarta. The Monument of Monas stands at 137 meters in height. Its golden summit weighs 14 and a half tons and represents the flame of independence. Monas has become the icon of Jakarta. In the monument complex, there is a national museum, Gajah Mada. It is the perfect place to learn about the rich history and cultural heritage of Indonesia. At the top of the tower, there is a viewing platform that accommodates about 50 visitors. We are limited in time on our trip, but we want to learn as much as possible about the country that is hosting us. We are going to a location that offers just this. Everything about Indonesia in one place. Taman Mini is a miniature park which showcases the wealth of Indonesia. Many museums show the cultural diversity of native tribes who lived or still live on many of the Indonesian islands. Visitors can see various types of buildings, clothing, animals, plants, art and dances from all 33 provinces of Indonesia. In the miniature park, you will see architectural styles from each of its main religious demographics. The people of Indonesia are mainly Sunni Muslims. 
But in Bali, you will find many Hindus, and in the Eastern Islands, Christianity is prevalent. According to statistics on the composition of Indonesia's population, it is an extremely diverse country. It has more than 300 ethnic and linguistic groups. Across the Indonesian islands, there is an unusual mixture of many customs and cultures. Uh, I saw on television. On vegetable. Yes, I saw. Lion dance. Yeah, yeah, two people. Mm -hmm. They carry. Yeah, two yeah. people. To fight evil, evil spirit is adopted from Ramayana into epics. Uh -huh. It's a mythical bird. In Sumatra and elsewhere in the coastal towns, a very different ethnic group, the Malayan people, appear. Away from the coastline of the Great Sun Island, there are peoples who live on migratory farming. The most numerous are the Batak in Sumatra, the Dayak on Borneo, and the Toraja on Celebes. On the northern coast of New Guinea, there are Melanesians, and in the interior of the island, there are various Papuan peoples. About three million Chinese people live in the more developed areas, bringing businesses and contributing vastly to the economy. The people of Indonesia speak any of 270 Indonesian and 180 Papuanic languages. In the colonial period, Indonesia communicated in the Malay language. But since 1947, the official language of Indonesia is Indonesian, locally known as Bahasa Indonesia, which is a standardized form of Malay. Music plays an important role in all aspects of Indonesian culture. It accompanies rites of passage, dances, processions, and most notably, the Theatre of Shadows. Dancers often illustrate the heroic history of kings and princesses. The dancers who tell these tales are usually dressed in expensive garments and are either wearing traditional makeup or ritual Indonesian masks. Taman Mini is the home of one of the oldest bird parks in the country. It was established in 1976 and it is home to thousands of birds from 175 different species. The birds live in nine dome-shaped aviaries. The feathery residents move freely around us, so it's not hard to capture a beautiful moment with a camera.
our new friends in Tamanmini aren't so feathery. At the Komodo Fauna Museum and Reptile Park, we meet crocodiles, snakes, turtles and Komodo dragons, which Indonesians are especially proud of. Jakarta was very kind to us. We have already learned a lot, and now it's time to move on. Indonesia is ginormous after all. Indonesia has more than 17,000 islands, of which at least 8,000 are uninhabited and 108,000 kilometers of beaches. The distance between Acer in the west and Papua in the east is over 4,000 kilometers. Our trip to Bali is short, but nature has blessed us with a wonderful view on our flight. The peaks of the mighty volcanoes pepper the diverse landscape, and as we gaze at the white caps of these sleeping beasts, I wonder if one might wake up. Indonesia is located at the intersection of the Pacific, Eurasian and Indo-Australian tectonic plates. This results in frequent earthquakes and the country has nearly 150 active volcanoes. Krakatoa and Tambora are well known for their catastrophic outbreaks in the 19th century. After the plane lands, our journey continues. We will return to Bali in a week. Our first impression of the island is good. Beautiful streets decorated with colorful shops and cafes is generously adorned with flowers and greenery. We drive to Sonor a small coastal town where the majority of maritime transport to neighboring islands takes place. Our next mode of transport is a speedboat. And our next destination is the island of Nusa Penida. This wild, rugged, and predominantly untouched island offers a lot to those who have an adventurous spirit. It's no wonder that our very first visitors from the waters of the Indian Ocean are the wonderful manta rays. These peaceful sea creatures pose no danger to humans and have shown their curiosity right after the dive. Manta rays are a member of the skate family, which comprises of 560 cartilatogenous species. The skate family are shark relatives, but unlike sharks, they have flattened rhomboid shapes due to enlarged breasts. The rhomboid shape of mantas can appear malicious to some people, and in some places they have earned the nickname devilfish or sea devils for this reason. Mantas can measure anywhere between two to nine meters in length, and they delight anyone who encounters them underwater with their two large triangular fins. Their elegant swimming and hypnotic fin movement are the reasons for their second and contradictory nickname by many travelers as Sea Angels. A 
Of course, they are not the only inhabitants in the Indian Ocean along Nusa Penida. The island hides many locations that are perfectly suited to snorkeling. Most of these can be found by the coastal road because the edge of the coral reef is not far from the shore. Well, our underwater excursion is a bit different. We decided to take a boat to the pristine coral reefs. In the seas surrounding the island, there are countless coral reefs that harbor some of the most beautiful dive sites in the world. The water temperature varies little with depth, and because there are no seasons, you can dive all year long. The water is warm, and the temperature ranges between 22 and 30 degrees Celsius. As the Indian and Pacific Oceans meet in this area, the Indonesian Sea is extremely rich in plant and animal species. The underwater world is beautiful and overwhelms us with its activity and color. But the new Sapanita sea world is also unique above the water as well. We explore the most spectacular coastal land on the island. Our first stop in the popular tourist spot, Angel's Billabong, and seemingly every visitor was awaiting their perfect photo opportunity. A brief chaos ensued, but the pandemonium confirms the location's popularity. Angel's Billabong and its unique limestone structure is one of the wonderful rocky formations in the southwestern part of the island. It is located near Broken Beach and is a naturally formed stone lagoon with a rich and picturesque marine landscape. The path continues. We stop at a wonderful location, a place where the ocean collides against a mighty rocky coast, Broken Beach. Broken Beach, or Pasi U, as the locals say, was once a cave where the ceiling collapsed to form a natural bridge. The coast offers wonderful views of the deep blue sea and features rocky coastal overhangs into which the ocean collides. Our next destination truly is breathtaking. As soon as we arrive, the stunning view of Killing King Beach captures our hearts. The road down to the sandy bay is tiring. Unstable stairs and rickety bamboo fences do not help with the descent, which is made even harder if you meet a crowd of tourists on the go.
The real pleasure is when you reach the bay and can wade out into the crystal waters, frequented by our friends, the mantas. The island's exploration ends with a probably the most famous beach of New Sapanita, Crystal Bay. The coast of Crystal Bay is one of the finest diving and snorkeling destinations in the world. As you navigate the wonderful coral reefs, you will meet colorful tropical fish, amazing turtles, and, if you are lucky, the famous Mola Mola fish. Beaches on the island are not only beautiful, but also dangerous due to waves and water currents. This is apparent as we witness the rescue of an overcourageous tourist. Luckily, everything ended with no injuries. So, after getting to know the water and coastline, it was time we become acquainted with the island itself. Travel between points of interest is slow, the roads are awful, and in the more remote areas, rocky trails result in dangerously bumpy rides. we decide to rent a car and driver. Traveling is a little safer, but the rough terrain results in an extremely jolting and bone-shaking journey. Most tourists choose to rent a scooter to explore the island. To many, this appears to be a practical choice. In hindsight, you might learn that traveling by scooter is much more difficult than anticipated. The roads are dreadful, and even experienced scooter riders don't exceed 20 to 30 kilometers per hour. Tourist injuries are common, and these can sometimes be very serious. Despite the wonderful nature offered by the island ride, the most enjoyable way to experience the island is to walk among the locals. The Indonesians are very friendly people, but not in the way we are used to. We are about to find out just how friendly they are. Their hospitality and kindness are quickly affirmed when, to our great surprise, they invite us to assist with their daily tasks. We help to drag a ship out of the water, which will later be renovated and will be used as a tourist transport. Thank <laughs> you. 
encouragement? Cheering? Goodwill and a lot of laughter, but the work is eventually complete. Well, maybe for us, but for them, it has just begun. Since the island is one of the newly discovered tourist destinations, the work will not run out for a long time. New homes are being built, and maybe, unfortunately, Nusa Penida will never be as intact as it is today. What about accommodation? We are at Vani Bali Resort, a five-minute walk from the port, where, as typical of Indonesians, we find more helpful locals. Small, personalized houses, palm trees, and beautiful flowering plants. The rooms feel very special, and to our great surprise, we are greeted with an open roofed bathroom. Friendly hosts also give us their blessing and protection from evil spirits. Each evening we receive Hindu blessings and gifts that they set out for their gods. Because we are in a tropical, hot climate, cooling is also considered. A small but pleasant pool is available for us. As if a swimming pool was not enough, just a short distance from our accommodation, a wide sandy beach that reaches out into the horizon invites us in a warm embrace. The panorama is wonderful, and for a moment we feel like we are the only people on earth. This truly is the closest we felt to paradise. In order for the beach to stay as clean as possible, tourists help to clean it every day. Very admirable! Our relaxing time on the beach becomes perfect as we discover a small local barong where we are served with delicious food and drinks.
This remarkable island completely took her breath away, but it's time to say goodbye. We are heading back to Bali. As we soon discover, the boat that is taking us to our next destination isn't quite in this condition. The landing is very shallow and only the skilled and agile manage to disembark without consequence. Occasionally a passenger slips, which makes for great entertainment, but the soaked swimmers quickly dry in the hot sun. We are full of expectations with what will this amazing island of smiles surprise us next. However, first of course, you need to find accommodation. Kudesa Homestay is found in a small village, hidden in a narrow alley by a high wall. We stop to take in the moment the owners are so friendly, the surroundings are beautifully landscaped. The rooms are large and spacious, with the most comfortable bed on which we have ever slept. The best part yet, there is also a swimming pool that offers romantic evening swimming in moonlight. The architecture is unique and we are delighted by the beautiful wooden carvings that are so typical of Bali. As we explore the village that hosts us, we are constantly surprised by the level of craftsmanship which is readily on display. Wherever you look, you are greeted by breathtaking handmade art in many different mediums. Wood products Beautifully chiseled stone buddhas, traditional batik fabric, painted furniture, silver jewellery and ceramics are exported to the West. Craftsmen, painters and other artists pass down knowledge to their children in roadside workshops and art studios. This can maintain a family craft for centuries. Hibiscus wood. This is local wood here. What's this one? Ganesha. And this is wood we imported, the black color. We call it ebony. Yeah? Hard and strong wood, ebony. It is typical for villagers to be renowned for particular crafts. Some are famous for wood carving and teak furniture, while in other villages and hamlets, you could find a local affinity for paintings, carved stone, bricks, jewelry, or various types of home decorations.
Artistic ability also extends to the production of clothing fabrics. The so-called batik is a treasure that is painted using a special technique which uses wax and its water-resistant properties to create beautiful clothing. Batik material designers use a special hand tool with a small funnel on the end to carefully draw intricate patterns on fabric before it is painted. An alternative method is to use metal stamps to apply the desired patterns. Bali's homemade crafts are booming and are very popular with tourists. The exploration of Balinese culture and art takes you back to the past. If you go exploring Balinese temples, which this beautiful island is full of, you will experience this firsthand. First, we visit Elephant Cave, or as it is known locally, Goa Gaja. We are given a sarong at the entrance, which we then wrap around us. We are guests in another culture, and we want to do all we can to respect this. The whole complex of the so-called Elephant Cave was built in the 9th century and served as a sanctuary. The temple is characterized by horrific faces that are carved into stone, presumed to protect them from evil spirits. The interior of the temple is small and the walls are covered with smoke trails. The cave is shallow and there are three stone symbols inside, each wrapped in red, yellow and black cloth. You can clearly see where the monks of old used to sit and pray. Due to an original statue representing the elephant, the temple earned the title Elephant Cave. Other sources state that it is named after a stone statue of the Hindu god Ganesh, which is located further inside the temple. Here we experience the traditional Hindu blessing again. Even we cannot resist photography, as the natural destination is Tanalot, one of the most revered beach temples of Bali. The Pura Tanalot Temple is the most visited and photographed temple in Bali, especially due to the sunset, due to its romantic setting. It is located about 20 kilometers from Denpasar on a gigantic rocky outcrop. Part of the temple is built atop the rock, eroded into perfect form over centuries, while the rest is found on the mainland. At high tide, waves flood the beach. Access is not possible. This temple is especially beloved to the people of Bali, and it is shrouded in many legends. It is believed that in the heart of the rocky island are poisonous sea snakes that protect the temple from evil spirits and invaders. From the beach, our adventurous spirit takes us in a new direction, further inland towards the island's center. Ubud Monkey Forest is a more temperate tropical forest on the edge of Ubud. Its inhabitants are cute and playful, long-tailed macaque monkeys. The secret monkey forest in Ubud is home to many long-tailed macaque monkeys. They are small, mostly grey apes, weighing between 2 and 5 kilograms. Some of the larger males, however, can reach up to 8 kilograms. All females collectively care for the young of the group. Feeding is not exclusive between a mother and her own baby.
Apa cek? Apa kan cek? Apa cek dulu? They live up to 15 years, while some females may reach the grand old age of 20 years. The monkeys normally eat a mix of sweet potatoes, bananas, papaya leaves, corn, cucumbers, coconut, and other local fruits. The monkey population comprises of about 600 monkeys, divided into five groups, with each group consisting of 100 to 120 monkeys. Due to the large number of animals, there are often conflicts between groups. This happens most often when a representative of a particular group crosses the territory of another. This type of primate is active throughout the day and usually rests at night. Mating occurs in the mammals throughout the year with increased intensity noted between May and August. We have a close encounter with a particularly plucky primate. Our backpack is inviting and curiosity takes the upper hand. We shared a funny moment and then each went our own ways. The monkey back to its furry family and us to our next animal adventure. We have decided to visit these small and captivating creatures one more time. We make our way to Alice Kedaton Monkey Forest, which boasts 12 hectares of sacred land, which offers sanctuary to approximately 1,000 monkeys. If you're interested, maybe later I have food in my pocket. If you want interesting to monkey be, uh, be close with your body, make the picture maybe inside. Yeah? Please uh, don't touch. Okay. If you will be close, be okay, but you don't touch. Okay. We are accompanied by a local monkey expert, whose main priority is our safety. The monkeys here are more dangerous than in Ubud monkey forest, so we must tread carefully. Are they protected? Yes, of course. Yeah. They protect like a human. Yeah. So the monkey pregnant about six months. Okay. Yes, they have uh, normally one baby every year. So they protect until six months. Every year, one baby. How long do they live? 
uh, about 20, 20 is long so the people get to be happy go inside clean and poop now poop not picking clean oh. every day so if not clean every day the smell is gone do you know firefox yes yes i have a uh, not wine then a pets yes i have from the other place about five minutes start from him i will need to see a uh, foot back yes. They like special like papaya. Friendly doesn't bite. Make full food in your body. Fruit bats, also known as flying foxes or flying dogs, are herbivorous animals which feed primarily on fruit. Unlike small bats, they do not use echolocation. Their head resembles that of a small dog, which is where they get their nickname. We meet the fruit bat once more, this time up close and personal. No bite, no bite. No bite? Friendly. Okay, what is this? Uh, Kalon. Fox. Flying fox. Oh, flying fox? Yeah, flying okay. fox. Oh, go down. Can I touch? No, 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 touch. Never forget that when you are in Indonesia, you must be prepared for everything. Yeah, it's okay, no The fear quickly turns to pleasure as you start to enjoy the scaly massage that only a reptile can give. <laughs> we snuggle with a monitor lizard. We are ready for our next adventure, but this time, the animal world we are about to visit is a little bit more colorful and a little more populated. Kemenuk Butterfly Park is located 10 minutes drive from Ubud. The main task of the park is to protect this exceptional animal, to conserve nature and to educate its visitors. Flies around at night? Yes. On the way out of the park, you can visit their hatchery. If you're lucky, you might get to see a newly born butterfly emerge from its cocoon. This incredible park is specially designed as an adult butterfly habitat, while flowing waterfalls and other areas of beautification make it attractive to its human guests too. 
The environment is scattered with plants and tropical flowers essential for its butterfly inhabitants. Our little friend decided to join us. This location is a little more tucked away, but the nature around it is utterly majestic. Teganungan Waterfall is located in the village of Kemenu, north of the capital city of Denpasar and near the village of Obud. It is one of the few waterfalls in Bali that is not found in mountainous areas. The quantity and clarity of the water at the site depends on the precipitation levels. Visitors can admire the waterfall from three different heights, which can be accessed by stairs. This hidden canyon in Guvank village is locally known as Beji. The word Beji directly translates to well, but as we later found out, this place is much, much more than a mere hole in the ground to draw water from. Hidden Canyon is a strip of indescribably beautiful nature. The peaceful area lulls us into a full sense of security, which is why we are so relaxed before we set off. We start our journey with our guide to explore the canyon. Yeah. We struggle against the strong current of the narrow river as we traverse from rock to rock. Sometimes we struggle to find good footholds, but all the while we are surrounded by rocky walls and natural formations that have stood for hundreds of years. We follow our guide and his precise footsteps carefully. He knows the terrain like his own home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Yes. Why is it Look at the way. Yeah. 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 For the most part, we stay on our feet. The view is stunning, but the adrenaline helps us traverse the difficult terrain without distraction. <laughs> Our guide explains that there is nothing dangerous in the river, only fish and eels live in this habitat. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> the river is cool and refreshing, and the spray from the water in this climate is a wonderful relief. The feeling of achievement when we reach the end of the canyon is glorious. After an hour and a half of grueling bouldering, our reward awaits patiently at the end of the journey, swaying in the air. From the wet canyon, our trail takes us through the Bali countryside to the crowded city. Thank you. Mm. Ah. Mm. Mm. Good. Mm. Good. One more, one more. One more. Thank you. <laughs> Green rice terraces are cut in two by lines of slim coconut palms that reach for the clouds. Lots of otter foliage muffles the distant hum of the city. Ubud beckons, and we find ourselves intrigued by what more the city can offer us. A scooter repair shop. Makeshift gas stations. Laundrettes. and fast food by the roadside. We love eating in our local Varungs. Traditional Indonesian food is most commonly found being served in small restaurants or kiosks known as varungs. Varungs are known for their very short menus, with food cooked using a unique sometimes secret recipe. Thank you. Delicious food followed by a nice cup of coffee. The best known coffee in Bali is called Kopi Luwak with kopi translating to coffee. Luwak coffee has long been considered the most expensive coffee in the world. Coffee plantations, or as the villagers say, Bali agro-tourism, are located in various areas of Bali. 
No, this one the mango. This one the mango stick. The circle fruit. Inside the fruit, the white color. It's sweet for the taste. But we process to making tea with skin of the fruit, the pink color. To for the for bone cancer, cancer brush, to for the skin also. Vanilla. On the plantations, visitors can admire various tropical crops such as coffee robusta, pineapple, snake fruit, sweet potatoes, fruit stars, cocoa, durian trees, and much more. The main factor in the high price of this coffee is its unusual method of cultivation. It is manufactured from coffee beans which are eaten, digested, and excreted by a unique animal, the Indonesian wildcat, palm sibet. This is why Luwak coffee is also known as cat poop coffee. The naturally processed coffee beans are collected by hand for roasting. From the animal. Oh, okay. yeah, this is not clean yet. Uh -huh. yeah, we wash first and we dry and we fill up by one by one, by hand, no machine. Uh -huh. This is inside the coffee bean and this is the uh, poo, yeah. the contact. Yeah. Yeah. The rosella, is what is this? Oh. Rosella. Yeah. This is balik ke kuah, chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah. Oh. This is minus tin pill. Yeah. Good for skin. Do you have uh, cocoa here in Bali for, for the skin? Oh, no. Like a butter no. skin? No. no. This is the ginger. Yeah. This is turmeric. Huh? Curcuma. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Okay. This is anish. Yeah. This is black pepper. Yeah. This is ginseng. Mm -hmm. This is ginseng and this is galanga. Oh. Yeah. This is cinnamon. cinnamon. This is clove. Oh yeah. We know. Yeah. 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 Okay. We roast the coffee bean. Yeah. Uh, Forty-five minutes until one hour. Visitors to the plantations can also try different coffee and tea blends. All tea. Uh -huh. yeah. 7 until 13. This is coffee and chocolate. Yeah. Oh. This is ready with sugar. And the special work of uh, the special uh, coffee, Bali coffee, no yeah. sugar. No sugar. Yeah. Would you like to try the Luwa coffee? Yeah. Oh. This one is special. Bali isn't just known for its world-famous coffee, but also for its traditional dances. Marong, many, many, too many, many. Yeah. Monkey, silok the monkey yeah. dancing, Balinese, ladies. <laughs> you the, I know you the like, like, yeah. very, very good. You can the picture, you know, picture. Maybe you back home. Where you been? I been the barong traditional yeah. Balinese dancing. What does barong mean? Why are they dancing? Barong? This it's... barong mean this called the barong. This big. Yeah. The barong name barong called the barong. This very very big. Yes. For the every day and the morning they start the nine uh, nine thirty. Yes. Uh, but this uh, uh, afternoon this different afternoon. Kecak, cak 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 different. All people in the morning, all okay. people in the morning the this year. Barong is the most famous dance in Bali, and represents a battle between good and evil. The central figures of the performance are Barong and Ranga. 
Barong is represented by two dancers whose movement must be fully synchronized. Barong has eyes, large ears, and a gold-plated crown decorated with glass pieces. The body is covered with velvet fur. Each mask has its own history, especially those that are considered to have exceptional magical powers. The Balinese Barong mask is in fact a kind of monster, but has the characteristics of many different animals. Ranga is another important character in Balinese theatre and mythology, and represents evil. Ranga has a serious demeanour, with big bulging eyes, long fangs, and a long red tongue that descends to the waistline. Ranga is a manifestation of anger and destruction, while Barong is lively, playful, and friendly. Dancing is a tradition throughout Bali and can be seen at any time of day. Our stay in Bali is coming to an end. But we can't leave the island before we do one final important thing. We will release a baby turtle back into the sea. And for this, we will go to Sarangan. The Turtle Conservation and Education Center is located in the island of Sarangan in Bali. This center was set up as part of a comprehensive strategy to eradicate the illicit trade of turtles on the island. At the center, they take care of injured animals, collect turtle eggs from tourist beaches, and buy them from locals. Eggs are then reared in the center, and baby turtles are released into the ocean. As the turtles begin their final real journey, ours comes to an end. Who knows, maybe someday, somewhere, sometime, we will meet again. <laughs>